I'm going to say this without an accent. The Chinese government during World War II didn't exist. And during World War II, China was completely getting destroyed. They would not exist if it wasn't for the United States because Japan was going to just kill them all. All right, so since World War II, China has become extremely powerful because they've learned a lot of information. At the same time, China has constantly had territorial disputes with everyone because everywhere is China's. Xinjiang, where the Uyghurs are, or the Uyghurs, everyone knows who that, where that is. That's northern China. They don't speak Chinese. Um, the Uyghurs, I guess they speak Uyghur or some, some language like that. They're Muslims. And um, China basically has a lot of trouble controlling these people, so they put them in concentration camps, and they're busing Chinese, ethnic Chinese people into Xinjiang so that they can, it's, it's, it's how they conquer them. But I agree with China that Xinjiang is part of China because Xinjiang has to be part of China because they have natural gas there. All right, so that's one territorial dispute. Number two, Tibet. At one point, there were all these Buddhist monks. You want to talk about people lighting themselves on fire? That's what they used to do. They used to light themselves on fire. The reason I said that is because a Baylor kid apparently lit himself on fire inside his own car. He strapped himself in and lit himself on fire, but then after he lit himself on fire, he didn't regret it and try to get out of the car. He stayed in the car, which tells me it's not suicide, and it tells me that logically there's no way someone would commit suicide like that. And when the ATF says it's suicide and they close the case, it tells me it's a cover-up. That's, that's an aside. All right, so in Tibet, monks burn themselves because they're trying to stop the Chinese government from conquer conquering Tibet. China has already conquered Tibet. I don't think they speak Chinese there. All right, that's another situation. Um, in, in, uh, on, on the coast of Vietnam, uh, China is basically claiming all the ocean near Vietnam and saying that's Chinese water, we own the oil. So all the offshore drilling off the coast of Vietnam, China is saying that's actually China, even though it's off the coast of Vietnam. All right, so that's another example of China doing that. Okay, so there's this island chain off the coast of Japan, and China claims that that's their, those are their islands, and they claimed that they were their islands after they found, I think it was natural gas deposits, I'm not 100% sure, something like that. So China says that Japan, part of Japan is China. Still disputed. Okay, so there's also Taiwan. In Taiwan, what language do they speak? Taiwanese. Okay, so um, in Taiwan, they speak Taiwanese. They're definitely not Chinese. China says Taiwan is part of China. Ta China has gone around making every country in the world renounce Taiwan and, and say that Taiwan doesn't exist. Um, and they're, 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 they're basically going around bribing every country in the world to say that Taiwan doesn't exist. Um, that's like, so like all these countries in the world, in South America, they all say Taiwan doesn't exist. We agree that Taiwan is China. And, uh, ta and okay, so that's, that's how China is basically getting rid of Taiwan. They, but they're afraid of going to war with them because the Taiwanese have a lot of, have a lot of money because the Taiwanese are good at business and the Taiwanese also have weapons from the Americans. All right, so that's another group of people that Ch China is in the, in the process of conquering. All right, so China has also had conflicts with the Philippines. Um, over fishing grounds. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the Chinese military uh, might have murdered a Fil some Filipino fishermen at some point. Um, that's really not that big of a dispute. All right, so, and also, right, and so, so that gets us to today. So right now in um, India, there's a dispute with China over the border, where the border is. No one actually cares where this area is because this area is basically like mountainous. Um, this is the Himalayas. Um, but China really cares because China is asserting their dominance. Because China wants to assert their dominance over everyone. That's kind of how China is. China also has a military base in Djibouti, which is um, right at like a very important spot in the Middle East. So if you're wondering if, Chinese, if the Chinese military is assertive, it is. Um, all right, so China murders 20, over 20 soldiers that are from India in, uh, in, the in, this, in this border area. And then the Chinese government releases a statement saying, we're happy we did it. We did it right. This is our area. If you come to our area, we can murder you. Oh yeah, Mexico, if you come to our come to come to this area, then we'll murder you too. Well, I guess if you send 
uh, Mexican soldiers uh, across the border in the desert, would I kill you? Probably, uh, no, I wouldn't. All right, so um, that gets me to my point. I think that everyone near China knows what China's like. Like, they're like the most arrogant, arrogant guy in the room, but the dumbest guy in the room. They're the guy with, that from Harvard who is Eric Trump or Donald Trump Jr. I don't really know if Eric Trump is smart, but my understanding is Donald Trump Jr. is not a brilliant, brilliant man at all. He has an Ivy League degree, so you assume he's smart. He's not. If there's anything that you'll learn is that you can be good at reading and memorizing information and good at playing the game of school, but it doesn't mean you're actually smart. You can be incredibly stupid, but then have the ability to memorize information in the short term. All right, so um, let's think here. Um, I have this story that I talk about called Monkey, where I talk about the Chinese, where I talk about how the Chinese people are monkey. They have been under my palm because they fuck with me too much for too long. And I, I, I want to take them out of that mountain and I want to someday let them reach enlightenment and be free and be happy and be good Buddhists. But um, they sure seem determined to stay underneath my palm. And um, if that's the case, then maybe that story can be applied to some other group of people in Asia because um, I think Vietnam feels like it's an extension of Chinese colonialism, seriously. Like um, Burma or Myanmar is, is, is basically an extension of China now. Um, I don't know if China's almost an, ex an extension of, of, of Korea though, but North Korea is an extension of China. Everywhere, it sure seems like they, they, they're, they're starting to feel like they're an extension of China. Everywhere in Africa, like, like pretty much everywhere is an extension of Africa. There's a reason I said um, the three cornerstones of the entire United, uh, entire world economy are China, Japan, and the United States. It's because of their relationships with Africa. Between United States, China, and Japan, we have relationships with everyone that matters um, as far as like raw material trade goes. But don't get me wrong, um, like the English own like a lot of stuff and, 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 and the Dutch, you know, um, and, and the Australians, you know, the Australians will own mines in other countries and stuff like that too. Um, and I'm sure, I, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of, I'm sure I'm underestimating how much the Europeans are outside. Um, like, I mean, I'm sure the French are out doing business deals also, but really, um, for most raw materials, like everything kind of, it, it, even though it doesn't originate in China, Japan, or the United States, it ends up there. All right, so what are we going to do about China? I don't know. I, I think Xi is one of those super, super arrogant men. And um, I think the Chinese people, um, they want respect. And um, I think that sometimes you use your government in a way that you think is like, you, you should respect me. I can, I'm going I'm to go kill people and I, I'm going to prove I can do it. And it, 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 like, it's kind of like uh, you get respect if you have a teardrop from murdering people um, if you're in prison or something like that. But uh, we're not in prison. So I'm, I'm just saying like, I mean, the form of respect that China's trying to get by saying it's good to murder the Indians, it's like, all right. I really don't think the Chinese government's good at diplomacy, which is good for the United States because um, if, if, if if we're going to be rivals, if we're going to have to be enemies at some point, I, I'm sure glad that um, you guys act like such assholes. Now, I, I thought we were going to be friends, but I mean, really, like if 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 you're going to be my enemy, at least you're going to be my enemy and act like that, and that way it makes it a lot easier to make sure that other people don't want to join with you. I think the other reason people wouldn't want to join with you is because. Uh, uh, if you're against me, <laughs> not a normal enemy. But don't get me wrong, I'm, I, I, I think China should join the, with the United States, but I don't have to have you. 